But look out. Here comes Bonsignor. Welcome to the JDV Productions Podcast. A little trouble but... here on the front stretch. One car hard in the outside wall. Interviews with the biggest stars. And I, I, I can't give it up enough to this team, uh, but especially Tommy Baldwin, man. I've had a lot of fun with him over the years, and it's just getting better. Go behind the scenes. In-depth storytelling. Catch up on all things JDV. Yeah, there are JDV Productions and Josh Maneda. Uh, the JDV Productions Podcast. Your champion starts now. Welcome back to episode number six of the JDV Productions podcast. My name is Josh Veneta, founder and president of JDV Productions. And today I'm joined by Doug Mazervi Jr. Doug, welcome to the podcast. Hi, thanks for having me on. You know, I watched the last couple episodes. I'm really excited to talk to you about what's coming. Yeah, fantastic. So uh, many folks probably, as I introduced you, recognize the Missouri name. You guys have a long history um, of participation in and leadership in the Proform Modifieds. Um, but tell us a little bit about how you got involved. So from an early age, I always went to the racetrack with my grandpa, you know, um, whether I was traveling with him and he was running the club racing or just going up there to bring something for somebody else. Um, I kind of grew up in that circle, you know, and driving, you know, I know Rob's who I raced with and had a couple instances with last year, you know, and we're, we're really good rivals. And I used to change tires for him when I was 10, you know, so it, it's cool to be a part of that. And a lot of people that are there have always been there, you know. Um, but I started by showing up there and got into quarter midgets and mini cups. And then grandpa had a spare car laying around. He let me put it together and we ran a light pro four for a year or two. Moved up to the Unlimiteds, ran that for a while, and then got an opportunity with Keith at Stafford and Todd at Stafford and ran an open modified show down south and just always been in modifieds. I never had a chance not to be so, and I'm loving it so far. Well, fantastic. Um, I have to ask before we get too much further, what was the A in your grandfather's number? And I've seen it on, on some of your car numbers as well. What does that stand for? So he he was a bunch of numbers back in the day, but then he went down to Daytona for a uh, race through the Everglades. It was called the Everglades 300 yep. um, in the 70s or late 60s, I believe. I'm not exact on the dates, um, but that was the number that was given to him because there was hundreds of cars there. And he got he was 11 and someone else was 11. So uh, the other guy got there first and he got 11A. And it's just always been on his car. And this year we did a tribute scheme for him at Stafford and yeah. When I got my Pro 4 back and running, I put an A on it just to kind of pay tribute. I never wanted to use his number because he never liked me running his number. Um, but I wanted to put an A on there for him. That's fantastic. So it, you know, the Pro 4 is we put a post out advertising that you guys are going to be on four of our events in 2023. That'll start at Monadnock just a month from now um, when we uh, open the season with the Duel at the Dog. And then you'll come with us to Lee USA Speedway for the Granite State Derby. And then your next visit will be with us back at the Winchester Fair at Monadnock in, on September 9th. And then finishing out the season in, in the championship event at um, Claremont on October the 14th. So um, in our advertisement of that, we just talked about how the Pro Fours are one of the most storied divisions and so rich in history um in new england tell us a little bit about the history of the division for those who may not be as familiar as we are yeah so um the pro four started as a little uh dune buggy club in chatham um cape cod out here on the island uh, it's a small little fishing town but him and a lot of the locals put together volkswagens and raced those in chatham and uh, 1970 uh anthony vendetti had a mini stock division and they didn't weren't getting the car counts that they wanted to get And at that point in time, my grandfather and him put together the Pro 4s, and that's kind of when it, you know, took off. It went from being the small town to racing at Seekonk, and it grew and grew to grew to where now it spreads from here. And there's divisions all the way out in California that were a part of the network back then, you know. Yeah. So you reached out to me a a little um, a little earlier in the year. Um, and kind of, we had a conversation and you shared with me some of the things that, um, you had envisioned for the pro four is kind of following in your grandfather's footsteps as a, you know, pioneer and a leader, um, in that group. So for those who may not be, um, as up to date as I am, what's going on right now with the pro fours, you guys are in, um, you guys are moving and shaking and doing some cool stuff and, um, tell us some more about that. Yeah, right now, um, Ben Ashford's been working on this Duratec engine that's been running in a lot of the mini stocks, you know, but um, in the mini stocks, they can be front wheel drive. You know, we we really 
haven't been able to do that. So we've been a couple steps behind those guys engines wise, you know, and now he's figured out a way to make those rear wheel drive. We've had a lot of interest with that involved. And, you know, right now our biggest problem is we have more people interested than competitive cars still around, you know, and um, it, it's just that period where if we get those cars and these, the interest is here, it can move forward and grow. It's just, we need those new cars. And that's why we're going to be working with who are working with on some of these new cars that are coming up. And so when you say a new car, um, you mean literally a new car, you're talking new chassis, you're talking new engine. Um, what more can you say about, uh, how production's going? When will these cars be available? How many of them are already sold? Uh, right now, um, I think my car is the first one that's going to be made. And um, we actually are just going to be getting it back uh, today. It left Rochester and we'll be back at the TFR facility. Um, I'm going to be starting to work, putting that together to send it back to get everything jig and fixtured to start preparing to make the other cars. But I'm thinking the first one will be done right around halfway through the season, uh, depending on whether we get the new motor package or use my old motor. Um, but they should all be available mostly complete builds for the 2024 season, but we're going to try and get them out into as many hands as we can, you know, and I know I spoke to you a lot about having the idea of a, you know, ringer car to have some big name drivers in there. And that's something we're really looking forward to do and, and, and want to find partners for, because I think having a modified driver in the field for our big events where we are in front of a big crowd that we usually don't get to see, you know, thanks to being a part of your events, um, would be really cool for the division. And that's my main focus is getting two complete cars, one for me to test the car. And once I know the car is good, I could put a modified guy in to bring bring fans and attention to the division, you know? Yeah, it'd be exciting to see if we could put that together for the sec last two events that you're racing uh, with JDV. So do you have a, an idea of how, how much the car will cost? Right now we're looking at ballpark. Um, I'm, I'm going to probably estimate over just so I don't, you know, mess up there but we're looking at right around 7500 to 10 for the body and bars the rollers should be hopefully around 17.5 to 18 mm -hmm. um and if we get the turnkey package with the dirt tech could be as little as as 27 you know with the honda it's a couple more thousand in the 30s because uh just a different system and a whole new ignition no one's ever run the honda yet and uh, just a lot of developing I didn't think would go. I didn't know all that stuff went into there until I started realizing I had to build a new car. I, I didn't understand that. I was just used to putting my car together so many times. I get a new car and there's just so many other things I didn't expect, you know? Yeah. There's, to a certain degree, I think it's right. You're, you're almost like building the, uh, you're building the plane as you're flying it um, yeah. type thing, um, which is really cool. So, I mean, as far as race cars go and thinking about getting experience in a modified, I mean, that's really reasonable. Yeah. You know, I mean, a lot of these SK lights, you can get them cheap, but new, you know, they're not too far off what an SK costs, you know? Right. Um, and the pro fours, I mean, I, I drove a pro four and I could, I hop right in a modified and, and felt comfortable. You know, the corner speeds are comparable. The motors are cheaper. You're not racing as much and you're not, you know, when you wreck equipment, you're not spending, you know, 10 grand to fix it. You know, right now we don't have anyone really fixing cars. But this new car will allow us to have something where you could fix cars. So that becomes a benefit, you know, because it might be cheaper to fix a Pro 4 right now, but no one's doing it besides Les, who just started this year. Right. And uh, it, it's just trying to wake up all these supply chains that existed in the 90s when these cars were thriving in 2023 has just been a really, really interesting process. Talking to all these guys that worked with my grandfather back then and or re reactivating his accounts that he already had with them, you know, and yeah. trying to get production on the parts that maybe they stopped making, but now they could start making again. It, it's been really interesting. And and so you mentioned your grandfather. We've talked about him a couple of times, the late Dan Mazurvi. Uh, what last year um, you were the honorary starter for our race at Lee this year, you've taken on a much more um, kind of front and center leadership role. What does it mean for you personally to be following in his footsteps? Um, I'm I'm just so happy to be a part of the division, you know, and last year I was on the committee and I resigned because um, I wasn't going to make it to every show. Um, and uh, Tim, Ben, uh, Henry, John Dumas, Les, all the guys on the committee, they're just doing an amazing job with that division. And we've brought it back to where there's a lot of a lot of uh, growth that we see, you know, but being back apart, I just want to make sure I mention them because they've they've done an amazing job for the division, you know, and. 
I'm starting to come back, but everything I'm doing, they're, they're working with me, you know, and um, I'm really excited to work with them. And I, I can't, it, that's the biggest thing is working with them. Cause that's always what he did. And uh, it just feels cool to be working with them and doing all those things and maybe not driving the car all the time, but watching the race instead, I never really get to do that. Yeah. Uh, I actually, at one point had worked with your grandfather, some, um, my gosh, maybe 15 years ago or so. Uh, yep. I, you know, what you guys, some of the stuff you guys are doing is, is exciting to see because we had good fields during that time where, you know, we were showing up to the racetrack with 20 to 25 cars. Um, and the pro, the pro force haven't seen that for a while. Uh, yeah. but, you know, it's nice to see the buzz and the energy you guys have and the collegiality and, um, you know, there's real momentum because you guys are working together. It's just great to see all of those things coming back because it is a cool division and it is a great stepping stone. And I think it's important to have, um, a division like the pro fours as part of what we're doing. Um, it's just another rung in the ladder to be able to work your way up to what I consider to be the pinnacle of uh, you know, modified racing, which is the NASCAR wheel and modified tour. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's what my dad's talked about it, you know, with me. And we've always talked about the whole goal of the pro fours was to be able to be a modified driver for a lot less money. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe it doesn't have the big V8, but when you're changing a motor, you can take the motor out yourself. You don't need to take, you know, you can pick the thing right up. It weighs 190 pounds, you know, this Honda motor and having this as a spec division, but making it as close to the modified as possible allows them to sit in the car and when they move up they feel comfortable moving up because it's right around the same corner speed you know the straightaway speed's different but these cars are so light and they get through the corner it's close to the same feel as when you drive the tour car you know you just don't have quite as much oomph under your foot when you get on the gas and partnering with a manufacturer that is actually producing tour cars i imagine there'll be a lot more similarities than there have ever been absolutely you know rob has been tirelessly working on this thing with the safety you know and the just the cage alone and how he's doing it it's identical to the modified cage the only thing that's narrowed is the right side so where your bolt where your seat sits the whole interior the gas the dash panel the gauges the pedals all of them are going to be identical the same exact feel as the modified it's just in that junior style chassis you know and uh i just can't speak too to the amount of um, just knowledge that Rob has about these cars and what he's doing with them and how quick he's making this happen and his passion towards it as well. Mm. You know, it's been, it's been a really cool working with him and I don't, I don't think anyone could do it like he's doing it right now. We had a conversation about what he was working on when we headed down to speed weeks, he was on my flight and um, I was around when Rob, I was at Thompson at the time when he brought LFR to market. Um, and, you know, I mean, they obviously came out with a bang. They won a championship in their first year. Um, yep. so it was, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what, uh, what comes from it. Uh, so we, when we head into the Granite state Derby, which is the second of the four races that you guys will be participating in, um, yep. that, that race is going to be the Dan Missouri Memorial, which will be in honor of your grandfather. And I just want to tell you guys how honored we are that you choose to remember him and honor him, um, at one of our events. It's something that knowing your grandfather, um, we take a lot of pride in and we'll, um, we want to make sure he's honored well. You guys, last year, you had the inaugural um, Dan Missouri Memorial, which was uh, really well attended. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, Waterford was a great show. You know, we had a lot of cars. Unfortunately, you know, three of the really, really good cars in the field, too, weren't even really able to take the green flag. Our champion, Rob, broke before the green flag. But there was a lot of speed and a lot of new faces that we saw for that event. You know, a lot of the cars that were purchased last year all showed up for their first time for his race, you know. Um and it was, it was, it was refreshing to see, you know, we had 25 cars there, but maybe 19 started, but we had 25 cars there and less sold his car that weekend. And I think that event, you can just expect probably the biggest field we have for the year. Um, everyone will have all their cars ready to go. I mean, I know I'm, if I don't have a car from an ad knock, I'll be preparing a car just for that race till my new car gets here. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to be everybody, Brett will be back in a car, you know, Braden will be in the five. We're, we're going to bring as many cars as we can bring because um, we won the race last year. Uh, my cousin won. Yep. Um, and we're hopefully going to keep the shop in our or keep the uh, trophy in our shop again this year. And that trophy, um, I happen to see. Now, is that who? who? Uh, oh, there it yeah, is. It's right, right back there. Oh, I yeah. see it. Yeah, right up there on the top on the top right of uh, to, or top left of your screen. Um, over yep. Doug's head. So, who actually won the race last year? 
uh, Brett won the race last year on a green white checker finish. You know, he got the run on, uh, on Ed and, uh, took it with, I think one to go. He only led one lap and it was the last one. So the most important kept it in one. the family. Yep. Yeah. And that, so who produced that trophy? Was that you or was that Brett? Uh, my uncle made the uh, wood base. Ron D'Alessandro made the uh, the the uh, Volkswagen on the top of it. And then yeah. Brett wrapped the outside of it. I mean, so. when I saw that trophy, I actually reached out to Tim um, because I think, you know, you know, and our listeners know one thing we take a lot of pride in at JDV is we want to have the best trophies around. Yeah. Um, when I saw that trophy and just the ingenuity and the creativity and what it represented, um, that's when I reached out to Tim and, and asked if he would speak to you guys to see if there was one of our four events that you uh, you felt you'd want to honor your grandfather at. And, and so that's what we came to. So the winner's spoils there is the trophy right there. And then um, the heat races will be 11 laps, which uh, was Dan's number uh, when he yep. raced the Pro Fours was the 11. So the heat races will be 11 laps, which is a, a little bit of a different um, and odd number that we normally don't run. So uh, yeah. I'm I'm certain we'll have a great turnout um, for that event. And we're looking forward to it, uh, no doubt. So of the four events we're doing with you guys, and uh, just to recap, it'll be the the May 6th event um, at Minod Knox Speedway for the Duel at the Dog. Then we go yep. to the one we just discussed, the Granite State Derby. Then uh, later in the season, you'll rejoin us in the fall back at Minod Knox Speedway and then crown your champion on October 14th at Claremont. Which of those four are you looking forward to the most? I'd have to say probably the uh, the Lee race, absolutely. Because last year, um, not to stir any trouble up, but uh, me and Brett always have this ongoing thing. You know, he wants to keep it out. He's back here and I'm out front. Uh, but we were real fast that race and uh, we broke before the green flag. And uh, I'm definitely going to be taking that trophy from back here and putting it up there for sure. That's fantastic. I love yeah. to hear that little uh, competitive rivalry, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, within the family. Um so if somebody wanted to follow along with, with the pro fours, Doug, what, where are the best places for them to learn more about what you guys are doing, how they might be able to get a new car, who should they reach out to? Yeah, um, absolutely. So pro four modifieds, we have a page on Facebook, um, that I've kind of reactivated and made, you know, a lot more active on Facebook. Uh, we don't have an Instagram. It's mostly on Facebook. Um, but, uh, if you message us there, we can, I can get you in contact with Tim, the president. Um, he handles a lot of the, uh, the sponsorships because we are looking for partners for that and uh, handles uh, just most of the business side and finding all the cars, selling them. I, I try and sell as many as I can if I find one, but Tim's the guy that knows all that stuff. And if you uh, message the pro Four Facebook page, um, I can get you all of Tim's information or Ben Ashford's information about the engines and what we're working on. And if you want to stay up to date with the new cars, uh, PFR chassis has a Facebook page and Instagram page um me doug missouri jr 67 on instagram or doug missouri jr just on facebook uh reach out i'm always available to talk and uh, give you as much information that i can about the new cars and uh, i'm just looking forward to uh the the duel at the dog because i can't wait to see all these new cars out there so many cars have been sold and gotten into new hands and new cars being built it's, it's going to be a good event so what do you think we can i mean we're not going to hold you to it but what do you think for cars you have any ideas? Cars? Yeah. You know, how many do you uh, think? I'm hoping, you know, at least 20, you know, is my hope. At least 20 um, would, would be really good. And I, I think we'll get that. You know, I'm if Brett's not racing, because I think he's going to be there in a modified, actually. Um, I might steal the one car from him and go take that thing out for, for a race, you know. But, uh, yeah, I'm hoping to get 20. I think that would be a, a good ballpark number. I'd like to see a lot more, but 20 to start would definitely be a good thing to see. Yeah, it would. And so is that the opening event for the Pro Force? Yes, that is. That's going to be our season opener. Oh, cool. So we've got the season opener and we've got the championship event this year. Absolutely. Oh, cool. I didn't know about the opener. That's really good. Awesome. Yeah. Um. So tell us a little bit. We've talked a lot about the Pro Force. We've talked about the project you're working on. You mentioned, you know, trying to kick your cousin out so you can get into uh, into that car. Um, yep. And then what are you what are your plans for the year? So my plans, Um. I'm fairly focused on this PFR thing. That's got most of my attention, making sure these new cars are built because we're going to have all 10 of them built by the end of the year, um, body and bars. But I, I wouldn't mind getting out and modified again, you know, uh, one or two shows somewhere. Um, but I'm, I'm really focused on just getting this Pro 4 thing locked in because once these cars are out there and it's working, then I can have the time to maybe go race a modified at Stafford or an open show somewhere. 
Um, but I'm always open to get behind the wheel, anything, you know, but my focus is making sure the pro fours are doing good. That's awesome. It's really cool that you're doing that and you're, you're willing to sacrifice to make to uh, make sure that the pro fours continue to grow and succeed. Um, I've got two open races that you can come to one June 3rd at Manadnock and one September 3rd at Claremont. So um, yeah, love to find an owner. Let me know. All right. Sounds good. Uh, so if somebody wants to follow along with what you're going to be doing when you're racing, if you do decide to race at Stafford or in one of our races, how can they follow along to keep up to date with Doug Missouri Jr.? So on uh, Facebook, I have Doug Jr. Motorsports, um, and that's where I post. I keep that active. I always post where I'm going, what I'm doing, um, and probably some of the behind the scenes stuff that maybe I won't post on PFR chassis because we'll be talking about my car specifically, you know, and I'm going to be starting to post update pictures because I'm going to be up at TFR next week building the first one. Um, so Doug Jr. Motorsports at um, fa- uh, on Facebook is probably the only place at the moment. I got to right. make an Instagram and a website. Cool. Well, that's where you can learn more about Doug. Doug and the rest of the Pro 4 Modified group are going to be at the second annual Duel at the Dog on May 6th and May 7th at the Manad Knox Speedway. To learn more about how you can get your tickets or the other divisions racing, visit jdvproductions.com. Doug, thanks so much for your time today. Absolutely. Thank you, Josh. All right. We'll talk to you next week. Absolutely. See you at Manad Knox. See you. <laughs>